Hello, welcome to Michelle Says Again. I'm Michelle. Today I have something really exciting to share with you. I have a collaboration with Stephanie from Stephanie Farrell Focus. If you are intrigued about what that might be, then stay tuned. Okay, so if you've been following me, then you know that I have a goal this year to have one collaboration every month during the during 2022. And so, so far I've had a collaboration with Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room, that was in January, and Andra from Andra Makes, that was in February. Those were both super fun. I will link to my collaboration playlist at the end. I was super excited when I mentioned that I had a goal to do a collaboration a month. Stephanie actually reached out to me, which I was so honored and flattered that she would be interested in doing a collaboration with me. The reasons that I love Stephanie are, and you can probably relate to all this, is I love her love of color and prints. Obviously, that speaks to my soul. I am inspired by her love of knits. I don't do a lot of knits. I actually have quite a few. That whole last row, you can't see it. Whoops, there it is. That whole last row is all knits. Um, I just don't use them that often. Um, but I'd like to. And then I can totally relate to her love of comfort. So I am all about being comfortable. Um, and so the fact that all of her makes, ha one of her top rules is that it's got to be comfortable. I totally relate to that. So I was super excited when she asked me um, if uh, she could be one of my collaborations. So our idea for our collaboration was that we would find one pattern, we would use the same pattern, that is designed to be sewn in either woven or knit. So she's gonna sew hers in knit fabric and I sewed mine in woven. Um, so then we can show you the difference of how the same pattern comes out if you do it in a knit versus a woven. So the pattern that we chose is from Rebecca Page and it's the Laura Cocoon Dress. So I'll pop up a picture of the line drawings here. You can see it's a super simple dress. It's just, it's one piece for the front, it's two pieces for the back, and then you have an option for either doing a facing for the neck finish or a bias binding. And that's it. So those are the, the pattern pieces. Um, they have changed their sizing since I downloaded the pattern. I, when I downloaded it, the sizes were XXS through 5XL. And I actually made this dress last summer and I'll get into that in a minute. But they've changed the sizing. So now they have two different size ranges. The first one is sizes one through 10. And the second one is a curvy size range and it sizes 6C to 15C. And I'll give you the measurements. So the sizes one through 10, and I'm going to put the size chart up here so you can see it, but um, it ranges from bust sizes 31 inches to 54 inches and waist 25 to 50 and hips 34 to 59. For the 6C to 15C, um, it's a very wide range, y'all. This is a really size inclusive pattern and it's bust sizes 44 to 76 inches waist 36 to 71 inches and hips 48 to 80 inches. So fabulously size inclusive pattern here. Um, it is a cocoon style dress with dropped sleeves. It has a scoop neck. There's a high low hem and optional inseam pockets. And like I've already said, you can finish it with either a neck facing or a bias. My first version, I used a neck facing. Um, I have since learned that I much prefer a bi bias binding, so anytime that's an option, I choose it. Um, so I did this one with the bias binding. It comes in three length options, but the reality is the style of the dress is the same no matter what length you pick, and there are um, instructions within the directions on where to make the adjustment if you choose a completely different length. Um, and I did not follow that the first time I made it, so... Um, Anyway, I'll talk about that in a minute, but they say there's three length options. You can do a blouse, a tunic, or a dress. I'll be honest, <laughs> the dress length is a tunic for me because there's no way I'm wearing that dress. It's, it's mid-thigh length, um, so it's basically a mini dress. Um, so I chose the dress length 
um, which like I said, I'm, I'm wearing it with leggings because that dress length is way too short. I could have added length, but actually I added length to the first one and I still end up wearing it with leggings. So I feel like the, the designed dress length with leggings, it's perfect for me. Um, within the directions, they um, guide you to make this dress completely with French seams. So that was actually a lot of fun to practice. I've done French seams before and I always enjoy when they are part of a pattern. Um, I don't ever think to do them on my own, but um, I do enjoy them when I am directed to use them. The thing with French seams in this garment, if you choose to do the optional inseam pockets, they also have you French seam the pockets. That can get tricky. Don't try to outsmart yourself. Just follow the directions and it is it will go smoothly. I tried to outsmart myself on this one and I ended up having to unpick and then I like read through the directions. I'm like, duh. So it actually isn't difficult if you follow the directions. Um, I made my first Laura dress last year. I believe it was in July for the Ankara Appreciation Week. I used this gorgeous Ankara fabric that I was gifted. And um, I really liked the dress. It was slightly too big. I added, I think, think four inches to the length and instead of like doing a line across the bodice and adding the length in the middle I actually just added it to the bottom of the pattern um, I actually didn't add it to the pattern I laid my pattern out and then I drew the added length line um, using my um, ruler along the edge of the hem and I cut my fabric out just four inches longer than the pattern. So that dress, I feel like it's slightly too big. I made the 5XL, which for the, like I said, they've changed the, the sizing since I downloaded this pattern. But when I downloaded it, the largest size was a 5XL. Um, the, if I had followed the sizing chart, I would have made the 4XL, but I was nervous about it being too snug because of the shape, especially of the bodice. So I made the 5XL and I was okay with the fit when I made it, um, but it, it did kind of just look a little bit too much on me. So when we decided to make it this time, I knew I wanted to size down, but I was, I so I went and I tried my other one on just to see where did I need to make adjustments. And I was actually happy with the fit at the top. It was just from the underarms down that I felt like, it was a little bit too big. Not a lot too big, so I wasn't like making major alterations. So what I did was I took the pattern piece, the original pattern piece um, came down from here. And so I just kind of left the same underarm space and then graded it slightly to the next size. And then I just went down to the hemline with that size and I kept the length of the 5XL because it's already short. So that's the size, I, that's the only size adjustment that I made. I just graded the size and the side seam down. And I'm really happy with the fit of this one. The only thing I would do different, and honestly, I should have paid attention to that when I tried on my version from last year because it had the same issue. The armhole is just a bit snug. Um, if it's in the right place, it's fine, but when it, rises it inevitably rises up then it gets a little bit snug so i would add maybe half an inch i think to the arm hole um if i were to make this again my goal when i made this one was that i wanted to dye some fabric so i had some white cotton fabric that i bought from amazon and i wanted to dye it so that it coordinated with this stunning pork pie hat. It's a handcrafted pork pie hat made in leather from Mari at Mari Sews. And she is launching a new business, a new leather goods business sometime this month. And it's going to be called Inspired Leather. You should go and follow her on Instagram. I will link the channel below. But I got this gorgeous hat from her. And I just, I love the colors. So she basically, she dyed it. She hand dyes the leather for her hats and it's this gorgeous turquoise color and it fades it's like an ombre and it fades into this brown color
What do you think? So I wanted to dye some fabric that would go with my hat. Um, so what do you think? I can't get it all in, but I feel like, I feel like that coordinates perfectly. I'm super happy with how that worked out. So what do you think? Was I successful? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Um, I have to tell you, other than the sleeves being a little bit too tight, I absolutely love this dress. It's one of my favorite dye projects. And it's just, I think the way that it fits me is flattering. Um, and it's comfortable and I can wear it with leggings, which is my go-to look every day is a top with leggings. So I'm super happy with it. And I will, I can see myself getting a ton of wear out of this and I love it. Thank you so much to Stephanie for agreeing to partner with me. I cannot wait to see her version. She sent me a sneak peek and I think you guys are going to love it, but I can't wait to see it on her. I will link her channel below. If you enjoyed this collaboration, then here's a link to my playlist of my other collaborations from last year and the ones this year. And I hope that we inspire you. Wherever you are, I hope the weather's amazing. I hope you're able to get some sewing in and I will talk to you next time. Bye.